All right, it's Hot 93.7, Hot937.com. Voices on your airwaves, ladies and gentlemen. And what we like to bring to you is the real, all right? We like to bring the exciting stuff that's happening in the community that's going to benefit the community, that's, gonna, that's doing something positive, especially when it's our brothers and sisters doing something positive. And I've put the light on these brothers in the past, and I'm not going to stop doing it. I'm going to keep the foot on your throat, baby. But listen, uh, these guys... Uh, they represent Welcome to Reality, okay? And I have the Director of Curricular Development, uh, Anthony Gay. I have Marcus Stallworth, who's the Director of Learning and Organizational Development. And I have Karan Webb, the Director of Operations, all right? And these brothers are doing incredible, incredible stuff in the community. And I feel that you need to know about this, and, and you'll see how it ties in to the bigger picture and everything that we talk about on a uh, weekly basis, whenever we're on Voices, and whenever we're, we're doing the Sunday morning discussion. These brothers are living proof, and they're doing everything that needs to be done in the community. Uh, brothers, welcome to the show. Hey, Biggs, man. Good afternoon, man. Thanks for having us. Uh, absolutely. It, w- it was a must. It was a must to have. Now, let's dig deeper and talk about what it is that you guys uh, actually do and, and what you do in the community. Yeah, for sure, Big. So, we, you know, we have a company that's called Welcome to Reality. And, you know, a lot of the work that we do really does focus on providing information around media literacy. So media lit- literacy consists of uh, Internet safety how to move responsibly online, and also how to take in information that you get through print ads, literature, and different type of outlets, how to analyze it and how to decipher, make sure it's credible or not, and how to make your own decisions and uh, how to move from it. Wow, wow. Once again, I have the brothers from Welcome to Reality here on the line, okay, and and what we're talking about is something exciting, people, something exciting, something that you need to know about because – I feel like this is helping to develop uh, our people and make them winners in in society, make them successful, get them on the right path to success. Now, how would you say your curriculum differs from that that's offered in the regular school system? So so, um, this is Anthony. So we created something that we feel is um, very unique. We have a program in a curricula called Mentoring Through Media. And what Mentoring Through Media does is exactly what Marcus just spoke about. So kids are being inundated constantly with images, um, just these messages that are always not, that are not always the most appropriate messages. And Mm. then oftentimes, if this is just the way the the mind works, if you're being inundated with, with a particular message, good or bad, like you start to internalize those things. Mm-hmm. And, and you start to believe some of those things. And then at times you can externalize what you've been fed over and over and over and over again. It's like what you what you put in is pretty much what you put out. Mm-hmm. So what we do through mentoring through media is we help kids understand the messages and the intent behind the messages, right? So we know parents have um, disposable income. So Nike and all of these, and you may reference to this many times on your show about you going out, you buying these Nikes. Mm-hmm. If media is telling you, you need these Nikes to be cool, you need these Nikes to be cool, then you, you feel like you need those Nikes. And if you don't, how does that impact your self-esteem? Mm-hmm. Right? So our, our focus is helping kids understand that sneakers don't make you cool. What, what, what you're being fed through media, especially in print ad and commercials, doesn't necessarily make you cool. We work on the individual within themselves, help them learn to decipher those messages, the intent behind them, and that, as we stated, you know, parents, parents, kids have the most disposable income. They don't have bills, so when parents give them money, they get to spend it on whatever they want to spend mm-hmm. it on. And typically, it's things that they really, truly don't need. So we, we work with them through mentoring, through media, and we use the same videos they watch, the same music they watch, the same magazines that they look at, we, we decipher that with them and help them break it down and get a better understanding of what it is. So it's, it's rather unique, and we've had some great su- success in doing it. Wow. It's Hot 93.7, Hot937.com. Voices is on your airwaves. Uh, I have the brothers from Welcome to Reality. I have Anthony Gay, Marcus Stallworth, and Karan Webb. All right. Um, listen, this program is designed to create winners. All right. And, and as you said, I've, I've always said this uh, on these airwaves where – we can do the research when it comes to looking fly, but we're not doing the proper research when it comes to having 
a fly mindset because we should all know that this program exists. And that's why I wanted to have these brothers on. I've had them on the Sunday morning discussion in the past, but I wanted to have them on voices because this is impactful. All right. We have to think outside the box. And I feel like these brothers are encouraging our youth who, you know, they're our future to think outside the box and understand that it's more to life than having the latest and greatest gear. It's more to life than, than those, those surface level things. We have to dig a little bit deeper. And I say it all the time, we need to dig deeper. And these brothers are challenging our youth to dig deeper. All right. And so this is the reason why they're on these airwaves right now. So let me ask you guys, what's the biggest challenge that you feel you face on, on a daily basis or when dealing uh, with youth from the community? Well, you know, Biggs, there's a lot of challenges that um, that we might come across with youth, but it's actually, um, it, it happens in a very unique way. And sometimes I think the first thing is when they see us or many of us who are adults, you know, they look at us in one or two ways. They either say, ah, oh, man, y'all just don't get it. I hear you, but maybe in your day it was different. Or, you know, they feel like maybe we can't connect. And that just goes back to what Anthony was referencing before about imagery and messages. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, we are adults. And, yeah, we might wear hats as, you know, adjunct professors or, you know, business owners, et cetera. But we also had similar experiences. Right. So so when we have different conversations and they know that, you know, we own a business or, you know, we were played a role in the music industry or have gotten bills passed and things, you know, in the state then it's like, oh, okay, now their ears open up a little bit. So, again, that just really reinforces, like, listen, why why does it have to be a measuring stick for them to make a decision if they should listen or pay attention to what we're saying? So some of that is those barriers that we, we face in the beginning. But when we come in, when it's corporate room, we, we move corporately. When we're working with youth and young people, we, we sometimes we dress how they dress. We rock what we rock. And, you know, it's amazing how those things could have a different level of engagement. And I think that some of the other generation, they need to be mindful of that because at the end of the day, we don't care where to get the message from as long as they get an opportunity to be introduced to them. It's introduced to it, and we could point them in the right direction. Wow. Wow. Hot 937, hot937.com. Oh, we're talking about it right now. Listen, big man here's voices on your airwaves. I have the brothers from Welcome to Reality, Anthony Gay, Marcus Stallworth, Karan Webb. All right. Now, here's here's something. I made this statement, and I made it a number of times on, on these airwaves, where I talk about, you know, when you look at sports, because a lot of people um, – I know a lot of parents that, that, you know, they push their kids to do sports and stuff like that. And there's a lot of kids, especially in the inner city, who have dreams of becoming professional athletes or or, uh, rappers and so on and so forth. Here's the thing that I tell them. You know, what you can do is the research right now and find out the exact number of millionaires who will be created from the NFL, NHL, NBA, uh, MLB, and so on, all right? The chances of becoming uh, a multimillionaire in the music industry, they're even slimmer. But there's no, there's endless possibilities to become wealthy as an entrepreneur, starting something that you do on a daily basis that you take for granted. And, and so I push people to think, think a little bit out the box. What is it that you like to do? Now do some research on it and look at people who are making big money doing exactly what you like to do, what you really like to do. And and so sometimes it's like that critical thinking piece that we miss out on because we just see what's put in front of our eyes. And so then what happens when it crashes? What happens when you have, you know, your son or your daughter gets that injury? You know, they're right there and they get that injury. And so one person who... I followed a lot is Inky Johnson. And I remember watching the football game when he was injured. He was a, a college football player. Um, and he was a few games away from the end of the season. Guaranteed top 10 pick in the uh, NFL. Um, late in the game, went to do just a tackle. Collided, and his career was over. He almost lost his life that day. All right. Now he's um, 
he's a motivational speaker. He owns a number of businesses. I believe he owns a number of hotels and so on and so forth. But he didn't let the bottom fall out when that happened. And so I think we need to have the real conversations and prepare the youth for, okay, what if this doesn't happen? And I, I don't know if you've got if you guys have had this conversation with uh, some people, some youth in the community, but I've had this conversation with some, and they're like, no, but it's going to happen. No, but they don't even want to think that. And it's like, how do we get them to prepare for the possibilities? Because anything is possible. So what if this doesn't happen? What's your plan B, C, D, E, F, G? What are your, what are your uh, alternate plans if this doesn't happen? Where do you go next? And what do you guys say to that? So it's interesting. So you hear that pause because I think all of us are like, we've had these conversations in the past, Nick. <laughs> uh-huh. wonder who wanted to kind of speak on it first. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll just say something really briefly, man. And like, yeah, I, I think that we all need to have some type of concurrent or contingency plan. And then depending on certain environments, like, you know, what's interesting, sometimes people say, okay, what's your plan A? And then what's your plan B? And some people think if they have to resort to their plan B, now that's a failure because it wasn't their primary. Nah. So that's not necessarily the case. So sometimes I ask people, and not just young people, say, who says you can only have one plan A? Right. Okay, so what's your plan A in this lane? What's your plan A in this capacity? Mm-hmm. What's your plan A in this situation? And again, for those who have been successful, you know, there's a lot of misconception, especially young people, but not just young people. You think you got to hit it out the park, guaranteed first shot, first pitch, first pass. And money the people who've been most successful in life, it's not about the things that were handed to you. It's really your response when you face adversity and what, did you have the fortitude and the resilience and the determination to get up, dust yourself off, learn from the mistakes, don't repeat them, and be able to move forward. And sometimes that needs to be talked about a little bit more. And you know what? If I, if I could add to that, you know, yeah. Marcus, that was great. And um. That, that you said that. So I want to talk about some of the work that we do with reality-based services, because as you mentioned, we have Welcome to Reality, but we also recently formed a nonprofit organization where we're literally, that is the focus. So it's reality-based services. It's helping youth achieve their reality, right? Because mm-hmm. we don't want them to put all of their, their eggs in one, in one basket. Right. So we, we, try to, we try to broaden them out. And I'll give you a brief example. So you are 100% right. So many of you want to be rappers, basketball players, X, Y, whatever it is. And that's, and that's as far as they can see. And there's nothing wrong with that because when we were young, we all did the same thing. Right. But what we try to do is we're in the process of developing with our nonprofit um, a, a, a program for youth. And I'll just give you a quick example. If a youth wants to be involved in the music industry, our goal is to teach them the music industry, not just how to be a rapper. Right. Learn how, learn how to do the videos. Learn how to edit. Learn how to mix. Learn how to, how to master. Learn about copywriting. You, you learn about publishing. Learn all of those other things because those people, in most cases, make more money than the actual artist. Yes. So we actually teach. You know, our goal is to teach individuals about that. And in addition to that, if someone wanted to be, you know, if you can learn the skill of, of if you can learn how to edit video, if you learn how to take, you know, take pictures, like you're creating a, a, a whole um, a, a whole lane for yourself to make money on the side while you're in high school, college, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Because you're learning some other skills that can be applicable. You know, we're, what we're trying to do with reality-based services is teach youth some skills that they can learn um, now prior to going to college that can be that they can apply throughout the rest of their life. For example, if they if we teach them about music or if we teach them about videography, if we teach them how to become a videographer, then they could do weddings. They can do their own videos. You know what I mean? And when they go off to college, they can use that skill to make money to, to sustain themselves through college. So, you know, with reality-based services, our overall goal is really sitting down with youth, doing an assessment of what they would like to become, exploring all the options within that field, and teaching them all aspects of that field. And then if they don't become that videographer, if they don't become that rapper, then they still, can, they still will know enough about the business to maybe find another lane to get in. Mm, mm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, 
All right, it's Voices. It's Hot 93.7, hot937.com. And I'll do the rundown again because I have the brothers from Welcome to Reality. Anthony Gator, Director of Curricular Development. All right, Marcus Stallworth, Director of Learning and Organizational Development. And Karan Webb, the Director of Operations. They're on the line. And it's been powerful information thus far. And it's not stopping. It's not stopping. See, what... These brothers are challenging our youth to do is think outside the box. Think outside the box. And this is what I've been encouraging us to do for the longest time because we have everything that we need to be successful right at our fingertips. We're just not thinking deep enough. All right. We're looking at things on the surface level. And it's interesting that you talked about uh, with the music industry when telling people, you know, don't just focus on being a rapper. Don't just focus on being a singer. Focus on knowing other things, which means focus on the business of music. Focus on the business because really the bigger part of this is the business side. All right, the skill level, being able to rap and put a song together, that, that's a small percentage of what's, go, what's going on. Hence the reason why most of the artists get the small percentage of the pie. All right. So you need to know all of the business involved. The more you know, the less you have to shell out on the tail end. All right. If you know how to become the producer, if you know how to put the video together, if you know how you don't have to cut the check to anyone but yourself. What you want to do is keep all of that in house. You need to understand how to maximize this whole thing. Let's stop making minimums our maximums and let's dig a little deeper. All right. And once again, I have the brothers on the line from Welcome to Reality, and we're talking about this. Now, let's say what, because you said not only the youth, not only, you know, our young adults, but our actual adults, sometimes you have to have conversations with them. How does that discussion go? Yeah, so, so it's interesting, big man. So there's a couple of ways that we approach that. So on the social media side, through the Welcome to Reality lens, you know, through our local, national, and international work, one of the most astonishing things that we really discovered is, you know, the kids just need a little more uh, navigation to help them with their critical thinking and their assessment process. But a lot of the adults, whether it's teachers, parents, foster fathers, foster mothers, t- educators, social workers, they are more disconnected than technology than the kids. So how could you educate them? How could you support them? How could you kind of prevent them from taking missteps if you're not aware of some of the barriers that they're faced with. So that's some of the work that we do kind of on the adult side. And even outside of that, in our nonprofit, do reality-based services, Anthony had talked about some of the ways that we're trying to empower young people to use these skill sets in a way for sustainability and entrepreneurship. We also understand that some of those messages that we see on TV and in music don't just impact young people, and they influence males, um, we're talking males specifically, and often in black and brown communities. So we, a lot of times we realize that um, some people, are when they're in areas that are resource deficient, mm-hmm. they're not aware of some of the supports that are really there. Mm-hmm. And we've developed a couple of strategies, some specifically for men of color, that could be a platform and a conduit to share resources, share information, and also develop uh, a level of camaraderie and support. And well, I don't know if Anthony might want to jump in and talk about that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we, we've been fortunate enough uh, at, with reality-based services and starting um, our nonprofit agency to create a platform. We use the Zoom platform, and, and we're honored to say that um, our first our first guest will be a, a bit of a role reversal um, when we get an opportunity to interview you, big man, next <laughs> Wednesday. Um, <laughs> so, so, so you know, and, and, and we and, it's, and, and I'm gonna just keep it. We're gonna keep it a buck. When we were thinking about people to interview, mm-hmm. we literally thought about you and voices and what and the impact that that's had on the community. I, I tune in every Sunday. I know your slogans. I know I, I know the things that you say every week, and mm-hmm. I really appreciate the work that you're doing because you're really trying to effectuate change in the community, considering what's going on with all the unrest that's going, to, going on across the country. Mm-hmm. So we, we actually created a training um, that's called Dear Black Male, right? Mm-hmm. And this training is broken down into four categories, and I'll go through it really, really quick. We talk about historical systemic racism, what has happened to people from the the people from Africa who got off that 
who got off that boat in 1619 until present day. Mm. That's the first sort of section of that training. The second part of the training or presentation, we talk about what the black male, black and brown male experience is like and what, 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 is, what it's like to deal with racism on a day, daily basis, day in and day out. The mm. third portion of that training talks about how the media, from its inception, from radio, back in the day, early 1800s, how people of color were depicted in the media up till present day. Mm. And, and, and then the last por- portion of that training talks about hypermasculinity, the black and brown male, and our, and our unwillingness to engage in therapy and get help. Not necessarily therapy, clinical therapy, but some of us have this thing about us where we're so tough and we're so macho that we won't ask for help. And, and we do that oftentimes to our own detriment. So what we decided to do was to create a platform called Chop It Up, which allows men of color to come together, no therapists, no clinicians. No, no, there are therapists on there, but it's not a clinical session. And we, it's a space and place to talk about what you're going through. You have to consider that barbershops and all of these other entities and places where people typically congregate are not open. So people need a platform and place to go, specifically men. Where, where they feel they could be vulnerable, uh, we, we felt we needed to create and develop that platform. So we figured having voices in what you do just really it meshes really well to what we're trying to do. And, um, and as Marcus has stated previously, we have folks who join that from all across the country, and we're trying to grow it, and we built capacity. So we thought now would be a great time to bring you in and let you do some of the work that you do and some of the motivation that you do because you motivate me. And our hope is that you can talk to these brothers and motivate them, you know, to, 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 to be on the right track. You know what I mean? So we appreciate you for that. Wow. Wow, man. Thank you, man. It's Hot 93.7, Hot93.7.com. Voices here. Big man here. And I'm talking to the uh, brothers from Welcome to Reality. I have Anthony Gay on the line. I have uh, Marcus Stallworth and Karan Webb. Okay. And now there's something that you hit. And I just talked about this last week. I I had uh, a couple people on last week, and we talked about mental health in the black community and how it's looked at as a bad thing. Someone seeking mental health is looked at as a bad thing, almost looked at as a weakness in the black community. And and it goes for men and women. And so and, and that, I think, is something that we need to open up the discussion on. We should have opened that discussion yesterday. You don't understand because there's so many people suffering from different types of trauma and they don't even know. They don't understand why the walls are closing in on them or things like that. And it's happening all the time and they can't identify it. And it's just tapping into a simple resource. It's just yeah, tapping man. into a simple resource. And so I think that they need to... Uh, they they need to start embracing, embracing this whole thing, this mental health thing. We need to embrace that on a more regular basis and more consistent basis because there is nothing wrong with saying, I need help. See, because it goes from not wanting to say, I need help, to saying, dang, I wish I could have talked to somebody. Because now you're in a situation, you're in a real jam. And had you had a discussion with someone and sought the proper help, we wouldn't have this going on right now. So no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is Karan. Just to kind of add to that, and we go more into it, you know, with the various trainings that we do, and particularly the Dear Black Male training. And I just kind of just just kind of just to share this for disclosure sake. Sake, um, I'm actually a proponent as far as with therapy and actually been in, on somebody's chair or couch or what have you here for the, for, for years. Mm-hmm. So I can attest to, like, the work that needs to be done even per, on a personal level and getting, uh, getting you know, obviously having someone hear me out and obviously guide me in different directions as far as ways to think and how to move. So, um, again, so I second everything you're saying in regards to that. Like I said, uh, just for someone who actually does do therapy, so I'm, I'm well aware of the impact and the positive, you know, um, ways that it does, you know, affect me here. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. I also add to that, big man. So, you know, so w- w- what you'll see when you get on Chop It Up, and we would invite everyone to, to, to you know, all, all, you know, it's for men of color, 
and we just want to put that out there because we, we felt like we needed it. After doing the research and putting that presentation and training together, as we as we dug and dug and dug, we found, as you stated, you know, we realized that men of color are really not getting the help that they need. So we, we find this as a, as a different alternative, and we've had brothers on there talk about some really, really deep-rooted issues, and we have individuals from 25 all the way up into their 60s. Mm. men of color from across the country. So there's so much knowledge and wisdom on those virtual calls that we all walk away really feeling fed, and we all sort of educate each other in ways that, that we, we may have not been edu ed educated, be from and, and educated before. And you also got to realize different people, different age ranges, different parts of the countries have different views and perspectives. So it, it, it shines a different light on, on so many different various topics but Chop It Up has been phenomenal. And once again, we want to thank, and I think Marcus wanted to sort of wrap that up and talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just wanted to jump on to something that you said a few minutes ago, big man, about people, you know, wishing in hindsight. Like, man, I wish I had somebody to talk to, usually after they get jammed up or find themselves in a situation. So with reality-based services, we really explore that and try to identify what are some of those barriers. Because sometimes it's uh, situational trauma. Some of it's generational trauma and different perspectives culturally around needing help and asking for help. But one of the things that people have a struggle with, Biggs, is the the money piece. Mm. So we just want to be very clear. We wanted to do what we could to alleviate any barriers, and if I could say this frankly, any excuses. So mm -hmm. chop it up that Karan is mentioning, that Anthony just described so eloquently, that happens every Wednesday, is at zero cost. Mm. All you need to do is log on. It's on the Zoom platform. It's free. As long as you have a cell phone or access to Wi-Fi, the door is open. And I just would like to conclude with this part. Like Anthony mentioned, we have people from all across the country. Just know that it's every Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern time. So for our Midwest brothers, our West Coast brothers, just know to make those adjustments in terms of time zone and your planning. And, now, and big man, just one more thing that I got to add, just just so people get a, a grasp of what Chop It Up is and what it offers. So, uh, you know, I, I just want to be I just want to be um, clear that, you know, we have well, we, we have a wider range of professionals who, who participate in that. We hmm. have lawyers. We have Ph.D.s. We have licensed clinical folks. We have we have social workers. We have people in all types of capacities who participate in this so if someone really needed some insight or some direction or some help this is the perfect platform and it's judgment free we keep things confidential we just kind of share information and the goal is to the goal for chop it up is when you leave chop it up you're going to be a better husband better significant other a better dad a, a better influence in your community that's what the goal is to uplift men of color so we can all be better so our communities and in our neighborhoods and our families could be better wow wow ladies and gentlemen it's voices it's hot 93.7 hot 937.com these brothers are with welcome to reality you understand and and, and we, we're digging deep this is the second week let me let me just put this out there this is the second week that we've talked about services that are offered on a mental health basis Mental health services that are being offered at no cost, where you can get services for mental health at no cost. And these brothers are providing that for you, man. Once again, I have on the line Anthony Gay, Marcus Stallworth, Karan Webb, free of charge. Now, this is just uh, with the Wednesday platform that they have. But Welcome to Reality is something that is deeper. All right, it's something that is deeper. So we want to dig deeper on that. Okay. And see, with all of that being said, the question that I have here is, let's go back to the inception of Welcome to Reality. Now, you know, when you when you have a business that you want to come up with, in some instances, you know, you put the business plan together, and in some instances, you may be looking for uh, finances or something like that. And I don't know if this was the case with those brothers, but maybe if it wasn't the case with them, maybe they've encountered some brothers who've had these issues happen, and maybe we can talk about that. What type of barriers or roadblocks 
did you see, and not even financial, but any way, shape, or form, where you could have said, you know what, uh, this this just ain't worth it. But you decided to keep going forward. So, so you know what, Biggs? I would challenge people not to get up or do anything different, but if they walked around their house right now, there is an appliance or a device that was created most times that didn't exist that was developed out of a need. Mm-hmm. And welcome to reality was the same thing. When we started doing this, you know, Anthony and I were doing some work at a college. We came across this area that nobody was really talking about. There was no information. We pulled in Quran because we've done some similar work together. And fast forward, here we are. But when we were trying to get off the ground, people were like, okay, that sounds good. But, like, the back end, you know, was different. And, like, when you try to lean on people as a small business, it wasn't there. We just didn't let that deter us. So we leaned on our own resources, our own um, determination, invested in ourselves, and we were able to grow something that not only is something that was small to turn into a business, to turn into a nonprofit, and also something that has put us in a situation to impact law in the state of Connecticut. And if I could say this humbly, um, right here in Waterbury, Connecticut, in my hometown, and where our business is, primary business is located, we just... uh, got confirmation that they're inducting us into the museum for our work that we've done to impact the entire state of Connecticut wow. in terms of getting bills passed for children. Wow. Congratulations, brothers. Congratulations. <laughs> that, wow. That's huge, man. You just you just knocked me for a loop right there. <laughs> and, and and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Okay? Because Marcus and Karan know how far back we go. Right, yes, sir. They know how far back we go. You understand? So, this is why this is why I feel like the impact is greater because these brothers were doing what a lot of these younger guys are trying to do now. You understand? They had their run in the rap game as well. All right? They had their run in the music industry. So, and and like some people say, and, and like you said earlier, you don't have to have one plan A. Right. You don't have to have one plan A, all right? Look, I tell people all the time, you know, when it when it comes down to being deterred from, from your goals and having people close to you try to knock you down and tell you you look crazy doing what you're doing, my mother was the biggest one in my ear when I left the insurance industry to come to radio. She did not believe that I could make a career in radio. And it wasn't her trying to discourage me or hating on me or anything like that. It was her own personal fears. She didn't want me to fall on my face. So you had to, you have to identify that stuff and not get caught up in it and be like, oh, I'm not. you got to believe enough in yourself that even when it's a difficult time like that to make a decision that you feel at that moment might upset the person who you love the most. If you believe enough in yourself, you will still keep going forward. Because once you reach that plateau, once you get to that point, once you say, I made it, I did it, I got it done. See, then it's going to be a different conversation. And it doesn't have to be a conversation of, you know, oh, see, you you didn't even believe in me. It's a conversation of, see, you didn't understand. Because that's your vision. It's not her vision. No one else is going to see your vision clearer than you can see it because you're looking at it through the eyes of the person. That's your vision. You have your eyes laser focused on it. They can't see it because they have other visions. Your vision is the vision for you. So you have to stay laser focused on that. And another thing that I like to, you know, that, that we talked about on this show and I've talked about in the past is, you know, I feel like sometimes, and I get a little heat for this, but sometimes parents try to live their dreams through their kids. And so they neglect what their kids really want to do, and they they make what they want their kids to do a priority. And that could be the biggest mistake that you ever make when it comes to your kid's future. Because, you know, I always use this example. I talked to uh, a football coach. He He's a little league football coach. He had a player on his team, and the kid didn't want to play football. He was into, like, 
um, I want to say he was into chemistry or something like that. And he was really into it to the point where he wasn't paying attention on the football field. Coming from someone who played football, that's a recipe for disaster. Because if you're not paying attention, you could get a major injury out there. He had a conversation with the parents. And it was a long conversation because the parents were not trying to hear it. And he told them, my son plays out here. If my son was not interested in playing, I wouldn't have my own son out here because I'm not going to feed him to the wolves and have him get a life-changing injury and then he'll resent me for the rest of his life. This is not what he wants to do. You need to plug into what he wants to do and stop trying to live your dreams through him. You had your chance to make it happen. If it didn't happen for you, don't try to make it happen through your kid because you're robbing them of their hopes and dreams. And so I see that happen a lot, and that's something that we need to address as well. Yeah, no, nah, interesting you say that. I think um, you, you're completely right as far as that goes here. I mean, adults, y'all don't live your lives. And I think it's just you mentioned sports. And obviously in football, in the particular example you gave, because, again, obviously that kid could get lit up and there'd be more issues outside of him just not wanting to play play football. But I think it's just more important, even the stuff that we're doing, again, just opening, expanding these kids' minds, but also the adults that do take part in some of this stuff because we, we work with the schools and work with parents and also we'll do adult adult work as well, too, just trying to just see things different, just how important that is to be versatile and also as an adult that versatility applies to your kids here i mean again you want to throw everything out there and see what sticks which is which is great but if th- that thing that sticks is something you it's kind of like ah you know you still got to run with it because that's that enjoyment that's that love that kid will have and uh, and that's your child and you want your child to live his or her life um to the fullest and do what they want to do because again as an adult you don't live your life so you got to fall back and just let let that kid be Yes, it's Hot 93.7, Hot93.7.com. Voices on your airwaves right now. Big man here, and I have the brothers from Welcome to Reality. I have uh, Anthony Gay, Marcus Stallworth, Karan Webb on the line. And, and we're talking about the issues. And, of course, if you've listened to my Sunday morning discussion shows, you know that I've had these brothers on here in the past, and, and they're doing incredible work in the community, and it was necessary to bring them on. Now, uh, once again, your Wednesday your Wednesday show, is it a Zoom? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a Zoom platform. It's a Zoom platform. So um, we can provide that information and that communication, how folks can get access to it. Um, like I said, it's no charge. It's uh, this particular opportunity is dedicated specifically for men of color. Not saying that other individuals don't have their own individual challenges and, and, and grapples, but this is what this is for. And again, on a larger scale, for, for parents, for educators, for other individuals who might be listening and supporting your work, Big, on our website, uh, welcometoreality.us, there's a specific section for parents where there are free resources, free tools free contact um, contracts for parents to help insulate and protect their kids, for kids to be commitments to their parents so we could do what we can to, to do to keep them safe physically and virtually as well. Wow, man. This is this is such powerful talk that we're having here. It's Voices. It's Hot 93.7, Hot93.7.com. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I know that we're, you know, we're kind of running short on time. we got about seven or eight minutes left. But it was vital and and. You know, before we even go any further, I want to thank you, brothers, for the work that you're doing in the community. And I want to thank you for taking the time out because I know that, you know, Karan has been hitting me up about the uh, the Zoom and the past few Wednesdays that he was hitting me up. I was always getting tied up with stuff, but I've cleared my calendar for this upcoming Wednesday because it's necessary to be on there. But when he hit, I said, you know what? Wait a minute. We're going to do this. We're going to do a, a, a double shot. We're going to do a one two punch. I need you guys on the show for voices. And then I'm coming on the show, all right, on Wednesday. And we're we're just going to make this happen, and we're going to keep pouring into the community. Now, with that being said, what I want to ask um, is, how how should I ask this? Because I always, I'm, I'm so passionate about, you know, when we have people who are success stories in our community. I've always found it to be important and 
Look, for you people who are working in the school system, I know it's COVID time and stuff like this, but maybe we could set up something where there's like a, a Zoom call in. You know, if, if you do have people in the classrooms or if you're having virtual learning, maybe have some brothers and sisters who have, you know, gone through the system, gone through the school system, some brothers and sisters who may have, you know, had a bumpy road in life, but now they're doing their own thing. You know, what happened to the days of having having that guy who owns a trucking company, that guy who owns, you know, your mom and pop store, that guy who owns, you know, the plumbing company or the, the electrician or something like that. What happened to having those guys come in and saying, hey, you know, this is what I did. I came up here. I did this, that and the other. You know, I, I think we have such uh, a tendency to lean on those people who consider those quote unquote celebrities and we glorify that so much. I think that aids in putting the blinders on us and that makes the job that you guys have at hand and I think anyone else who's trying to reach people in the community, it makes their jobs a whole lot more difficult. And, and so I, I don't know if you guys agree with that, but I feel like it makes it so much more difficult when we don't highlight our local heroes. We don't highlight those people who are success stories who were homegrown. They came from the community right here. They grew up right here. We don't make these guys, we don't, you know, shine the light on them enough. And I think that's why it's so difficult for you to get your message out there sometimes because, or or even me or anyone who's trying to let people know, look, you could be successful from the comfort of your own home. All right. There's people who have made millions of dollars sitting at home. It's all about what they're plugging into. It's all about the research that they're doing. You know, as as a parent, I mean, I can't tell my kids to go and read if I'm not reading because they're following your lead. So if they see you, you know, every time that you're home, you got the remote in your hand and you're sitting in front of the TV, then they're going to be like, well, I want to sit in front of the TV and relax too. But if you're sitting down and reading with them, then they're going to be more inclined to want to read and learn more. And every day is a learning experience no matter how old you get. And, and, you know, I remember talking to a group of parents and I told them, I said, you know, some people feel like they missed their opportunity if they didn't go to college and graduate within that first four years of graduating high school. They just gave up. Uh, what I look like being 40, 50 years old, uh, being in a classroom with a bunch of 18, 19 year olds. You look like someone who never gave up. You look like someone who never gave up. So I'll let you guys speak to that. I don't want to drown out the conversation because I get man, started. I'm, I'm glad you said that, man, because, listen, you know, uh, uh, from the university level, you know, I've, I've taught, uh, you know, my share of courses, you know, over 50 at this point on the graduate and undergraduate level. And, you know, it's interesting. Some of the some of the individuals who get the most out of college is ones who've had that lived experience. And, you know, I tell my students, some of them even older than me at some point, I said, listen, don't be discouraged, man. When you get that diploma, it doesn't tell you how long it took you to do it. It has a date of completion, date of completion. And then you have that and you own that, and that could be a stepping stone if that's what you decide to do. But you're right. You have to absolutely live what you live and model behavior because the kids are watching and they listening. So you could tell them one thing, but if they see you doing something different, man, they might not say it to your face. But in their mind, they're like, come on, man, what you going to tell me? Look at you. And at those young ages, man, you know that that's they very, very impressionable. And that even goes in your own community, man. And that's something I think we need to do better, man. And not be like, oh, man. Not even to cut you off, but we need to understand that there is nothing wrong with never giving up on yourself. We have to practice not giving up. We have to practice digging through the tough times, man. We have to practice doing that at all costs, you know, because how, how can we... How can we tell someone not to give up on themselves and we've given up? So we can't continue to give up on ourselves, but then stand out there and preach and, and preach that, you know, don't give up, don't give up. And, and we've given up. We can't stand in front of someone and say, don't give up. And, and we've given up on ourselves.
you know, with the young people, man, it's important because, you know, we got to lead by example to your point, man. So, you know, we can tell them one thing, but if we're doing something different, they always watching. And um, I really appreciate the point that, uh, you know, sometimes you got to let kids figure out their own lane. And, you know, I tell my son all the time, like, listen, I'll support you in anything that you're trying to do, provided that it's positive. But you know what I mean? They're going to have successes. They're going to have trials. And they're going to have some catch some L's in the process. And what I really like about the Chop It Up group is, yeah, we have attorneys and we have lawyers. We have um, all types of folks. But we also have brothers who've been incarcerated, who've turned their life around, who've created own businesses. We have oh, those who own their own business from vocational skills and trade. And some guys are just regular dads and regular dudes just looking for some camaraderie and something positive. So, like, I don't want to – it could be empowering, but in the same breath, we don't want to discourage other people to be like, man, we're not at that level, man. We might not be qualified to participate. Man, it's for everybody, man, and we want to eliminate all the challenges and barriers, brother. It's free. It's open. And this time, with all this turbulence, the more support we can have to lean on each other, the better. No doubt. And I would just call really quick, big man. You know, one of the things – we got a tagline, right? And, and I just wanted to be clear. So – our tagline is, this is not a support group. It's right. a group to support each other. That's who we are. We're here to support each other. So so hopefully, you know, people can lock in and, and, and see, what, see what it's all about. Right. No doubt. Well, listen, brothers, we got to conclude on that note. But I want you to once again put your information out there for anyone who wants to reach out to you and be involved in this. Sure, no problem. I know we can be reached at. Welcome the number two reality dot us. That's welcome the number two reality dot us. And that same welcome to reality, you can um, hit us up to on IG, Facebook, on Twitter, and it all pull up there as well. And if you're looking just to contact us, you know, um, through phone, our phone number is actually two zero three seven five four eight thousand extension four three four. Again, that's two zero three seven five four eight thousand extension four three four. So those are the ways you can get a hold of us. Man, listen, I want to thank you guys. Uh, Welcome to Reality is is, uh, definitely a big move, man. Listen, um, once again, I want you guys to support this, and this won't be the last time that I had you guys on the show. And I say that every single time that you've been on the show, and and I've lived up to my word. And and I'm going to be on there Wednesday, and we're going to definitely chop it up. Uh, Anthony Gay, Director of Curricular Development, Marcus Stallworth, Director of Learning and Organizational Development, Karan Webb, Director of Operations. Welcome to Reality. It's been Voices. It's Hot 93.7. Salute, brothers. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Nah, thank, thank you, you Biggs. All right. It's Hot 93.7. Sunday School is next. Keep it here.